Good afternoon, everyone. I want to talk to you today about how going into the ocean can change your life and how I believe that can change the world. My journey underwater began with snorkeling and diving. I'm continually amazed by the way that one little piece of tempered glass can completely change our perspective on 70% of our planet. Before I place this piece of glass in front of my eyes, the ocean was a vast, often intimidating and largely inanimate space. Going underwater changed that. On an island called Havelock in the Andamans, I realized that far from being a claustrophobic blanket, the ocean is a space of light and lightness. Held by seawater, even the awkward, the, the heavy, the clumsy like me are transformed into ballerinas. Changing your experience of your body is one thing. As a diver, you become half fish, half grace. As a surfer, a breeze that dances on the waves. But more profound, I think, is the transformation that occurs in the mind. Here, truly, the elemental forces of water and air can empower instead of overpower you. While diving, the closest and almost the only sound you hear is whoosh of air entering your lungs and the gurgle of your exhalation bubbling out into the water. The single most important thing that we do to stay alive goes so unnoticed on land, but really like a yogi you come back to it underwater. And through this you see how long and deep breaths can make you feel peaceful and make all of life more accessible and conversely how short shallow ones can steer you towards panic and helplessness. But enough about the inside. After all, going underwater into the larger part of our planet is about exploration. Exploring spaces and life that exist in a different, a denser medium. Going underwater can change your life because of all the astonishing animals that you can encounter there. My first dives ever were in coral reef ecosystems, which despite covering less than a percent of the ocean's surface, contain more than a quarter of the ocean's fish. Um, corals are made up of tiny jellyfish-like organisms that over millions of years have layer by layer set down calcium carbonate structures that over time have become big enough to be seen from the moon. And just like the infrastructure of cities, the, the tall buildings, the shops, the roads, uh, attract people from villages all over the world, uh, so too do the structures of coral attract fish from the vast open seas. The smaller ones come seeking shelter, which attract the predators, the jacks, the stingrays, the sharks. Other animals come to graze, so you have sea turtles, parrotfish, and then you have visitors from the open seas, the, the massive mantas that stop by for a quick clean in the fish spa. Now why does seeing a bunch of fish change your life? Their pure beauty is a part of it. Uh, wild colors, psychedelic patterns. For me, looking at these fish fills me with the same reverence as looking at a Monet or a Klimt. Uh, but there's also this casual disregard for the physical laws that govern the shapes and sizes of terrestrial animals. And I love the result of that. It makes ocean dwellers bizarre and beautiful and almost not of this earth. Like this little snail of the sea. He's about this big. He's lost his shell and waves his lungs outside of his body. And this cuttlefish. Watch him change color, shape and texture to blend into his environment. And then there's the whale shark, the biggest fish in the sea. Coming eye to eye with giants like this really changes your perspective on the scale of your own being. I'm sure many of you have been on safaris in one of India's jungles. You've watched elephants graze and you've clutched your car seats as a tiger has crossed your path. And you've loved it. As a nation, it's moved us enough to valiantly protect our forests. Big benefactors have stepped in to fund the protection of our big cats and have generated the political will and the public opinion to do so with a fair amount of success. But I'm sure many of you will be shocked to know that a lot of the footage you've seen here today has been shot by an Indian photographer in Indian waters. Imagine if all of us here were divers, snorkelers, and surfers. Imagine if we loved our ocean without fear, with great respect, but without fear.
And if we followed our natural human progression from exploration to inspiration to passion to eventually changing the way we do things. I learned about the way we use our oceans as a dump yard when I went underwater and saw discarded mineral water bottles and lace packets snagged onto a piece of coral where they will remain for hundreds of years. Uh, when we stepped onto a pristine, uninhabited island in the Andamans and found it littered with Malaysian juice bottles and lone flip-flops. That's just some of it that we're carrying away there. I learned about the effects of overfishing when I dived for years without seeing sharks, but then stepped into a fish market one day and saw this. Global warming and climate change were just concepts to me, uh, ominous but vague, until I realized, until I saw firsthand that my favorite places were their first victims. Early in my dive career, one of the uh, most beautiful sites that we used to go to was called South Button. It was an island about 800 meters in circumference, which had magnificent coral growing all around it. It took us about an hour and a half to get there in our little wooden dungies with uh, Enfield silencers barely muffling the sound of, of the noisy engines. But the ride was always worth it. I left the islands just before the monsoon and I will never forget coming back to South Button just a few months later. The warm waters of the 2010 El Nino had entirely destroyed the reef. The coral, the structure, most of the fish were all gone, replaced with dark green rubble. Global warming, climate change. Many argue these concepts and feel that they can be negated with uh, statistics and debate. But I think those that know the ocean realize that this big resource is just buffering land for now taking the hit, rising, changing long-established current patterns. But the breakdown has begun, and it won't be long before it climbs up onto land. And no amount of statistics is going to deny this. I would like for people to stop living in ignorance. And I would like for this apathetic stance that we, as a nation, take towards our ocean to change. And I believe the only way that is possible is if you swim in the ocean and make friends with the animals there. It's pretty incredible how so many people that live next to coasts and rivers in India don't know how to swim. As part of my work with ReefWatch, I run programs for village children of the Andaman Islands, children of fishermen, farmers and laborers. Uh, we meet every weekend and over the course of a few months, they learn through games and art and theater, they learn about the ocean and its impact on their daily lives. They learn to swim, snorkel, even try scuba diving, and through that to love their sea. In time, I hope to be able to train them in careers that are economically and ecologically sustainable and are linked with the existence of wild marine spaces. These are really not expensive programs to run, but you'll be amazed at how difficult it is to raise money for them. And that's because most generous individuals and companies in our country still believe that environmental concerns, especially to do with seawater, which isn't even drinkable, are, um, are elitist concerns, unlike women's empowerment, poverty alleviation, and education. Shouldn't the recent Delhi disaster at least make us question that priority. We managed to dirty our air to an extent that we fear breathing it. We had to close down our schools for about a month to deal with that mess. And then there was the unprecedented torrential rainfalls in Chennai, once more disrupting schools, jobs, our precious economy, and harming the least privileged the most, the way that it always is with natural disasters that seem to be happening more and more frequently thanks to human influences. And that's why I believe that going into the ocean is more than just a personal experience. By seeing its beauty and being moved by it, you too will want to know more about the effects of the garbage that we're putting into it. You will want to know about the toxicity levels in, in, in your seafood. You will all ask with greater urgency why hundreds of whales are washing up dead on our coast. That you will demand greater care of this resource that gives us food and medicine and more than half the oxygen on our planet and brings us our monsoons. <laughs> Maybe after watching this talk and seeing these incredible visuals of life underwater, you too will wonder where and how you can get into the ocean. 
And maybe you'll be struck by the irony of having to travel to do it when you live in a coastal city. Here we are, about five minutes from, from an ocean that we've dirtied too much to swim in. And maybe you'll join me in doing something about that. My dream is that in 10 years, we live in a Mumbai where people go to the beach instead of the mall, where my future kids will be more likely to go out kayaking, hoping to see dolphins, than to the cinema, hoping to get tickets. But you don't have to be rich to have a good time because you've got clean beaches and cool waters you can dip into, catch a wave, and meet a fish. Thank you.